Hello, my name is Lisa Bush, and I'd like to welcome you to the Affordable Integrated Municipal Software Webinar. Um, right now, everybody should be looking at my desktop. I do have you on mute. If you do have questions, there's a couple ways you can ask throughout the presentation. One is you can take yourself off mute, or you can also send me a chat message, and I'll stay on at the end as long as you know it's needed to answer any questions that anybody has. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's take what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about our integrated solution. We have over 30 different products that you can pick and choose from. Everything works together, so you're not going to have to have that side spreadsheet. We do give you the ability to post in detail. As an example, um, let's say you're using our payroll or our utility billing. In the general ledger, you're going to be able to see customers that were billed, employees that were paid, so you have that detail as it comes into the GL. Um, we're going to spend the first part of our um, webinar talking about the fund accounting solution. It is designed from the ground up um, to work for local government. It tracks unlimited funds. You're going to get line item budgeting, so at any point you're going to know what funds are available. Um, we'll also spend time talking about our utility billing solution. Um, it's tightly integrated. It is a true cycle billing so that if you bill multiple groups or if you have customers that move in or move out mid-cycle, we can easily prorate those charges. Um, we'll talk about using technology such as emailing utility bills, payments on your website, using automated reading solutions. So we'll cover all of that. At the end, we'll talk about the benefits of having one database of names and addresses. If you start implementing all of our products, if you get a call from one of your constituents, on one screen you can see um, their tax bill, their utility bill, maybe an invoice, a permit, a business license. We pull all that together and tie it by person. So if they come into the counter, you can literally bring in all balances just by knowing their name. We have the exact same view by address. So if you want to know all activity at a certain address, you can see permits and tax bills and utility bills and licenses, everything at that particular property. And at the very end, we'll talk about our new report designer. It allows you to create any type of report. Um, you can modify existing reports, but we give you access to all of your data fields so you can literally drag and drop those fields to create um, files or reports. So we'll take a look at that as well. So with that, um, let's go ahead and get started. I did want to pass on my contact information. So if you do um, want to learn more after the presentation, feel free to email me or you can certainly call me but we'll go back to that at the very end when I open it up to questions. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. Let me bring up the screen here. Um, this is the screen that you're going to see when you log into our software. As I mentioned earlier, we have over 30 different products. We're gonna spend the first time, uh, first part of the presentation looking at the financials. Um, we also have utilities. Um, we've got permits and licensing and um, code violations, municipal courts, and public safety. So let's go ahead and click on the dollar sign, and that's gonna bring up the different financial components. So even within this area, you can pick and choose just the pieces that you need to run your organization. The look and feel of all of our products are the same. So in other words, once you learn the financials, the billing, or the courts, it's all gonna work the same. Things that you do on a daily basis, we've got those items under the daily tab. Things that you do more of a once a month, once a year, each application will have a periodic tab. Um, each application also has a set of reports. We do keep unlimited history. All of our reports, you can email, you can also go to Word and Excel. So it's very similar to a Microsoft product. Um, we're gonna look at inquiries. Um, we allow you to keep unlimited history. We're going to take a look at how we can drill down and see detail on the inquiries. And the very last tab is something called tables. This is typically where you get started. It allows us to um, 
basically install this all over North America where you can actually define your chart of accounts or you can set up, you know, your vendors or your um, pay information. So tables are where you can set it up to have your unique information. And we'll take a peek at that as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the general ledger. As I mentioned, this is the heart of the system. Everything flows to the general ledger. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up an example here. And this is the screen that you would go to to do any type of journal entry. Keep in mind, this is the only time you're gonna debit and credit everything coming over from all the different areas. We're gonna create those for you. Um, if you look at our toolbar, it's like any other Microsoft product. So navigation's identical. If you have a question within the software, you can hit the telephone and electronically submit a call. We know exactly which product, we know the menu option. Let us know your question and your preference on a phone call or an email. So you don't have to stop what you're doing, you can just electronically submit that call. Now, a couple of key things here. One is, this is a date-driven system. We give you the ability to post to any period. Here it is, April the 30th. If I need to post this back to January, I've got the ability to do that. Now, I can also lock down January where I can't post to it. You have the same flexibility on opening a year and closing a year. So as an example, if your year ends December 31st, if you want to close it on January the 5th, go ahead and do it, even though your auditors won't be on site for maybe another, you know, five weeks. I can reopen that year. So opening and closing is very easy. Also, I want to point out, we're going to make sure debits and credits equal, even if you're crossing funds. We're not going to let you get out of balance. And we have some organizations that want to track grants and projects that span multiple years. You can actually define your projects and they don't have to be coded into your chart of accounts. It can be anything. Um, it could be something that lasts seven years or maybe something that lasts just a weekend. But we give you the ability to create it and have different tasks and different categories so that for the life of the project, we can you know, pull in every dollar spent or even if there's revenue that's tied to that particular project. So it's a nice way to track those side things. Now, also notice we have something called recurring. You're gonna see this feature in our journals. We have it in purchase orders. We have it in payables. You can create a template. What's a recurring entry? Where it defaults the, do the um, account numbers and maybe the dollar amounts, or it might be where it's always these account numbers with different dollar amounts. So you can have as many different recurring templates. Same thing when we get into paying your bills, you can have it do it by percentages and same thing with purchase orders. So we do have that ability as well. Now with our solution, you're gonna be able to look at things before you post or after you post. As an example, you may wanna see the entries that came over from, let's say utility billing. Um, you could say a certain period or a certain date range, but you're gonna be able to see how those journals um, got created for you. All of our reports, I can print to the screen, I can email, I can go to Word or Excel, or even create a PDF. That's gonna be true for all the reports. So you may just wanna look at it. But you're able to go back and take a look at those um, transactions and see how they post it in before you post or after you post. And as I mentioned, if you post in detail, I'm gonna show you how when we start doing some searches, I can see what customers make up those journals or what employees make up those journals. So it's great to have that detailed information. Now, under periodic, this is where you're gonna do things like create your budget, close your year, maybe reverse something. Now, most of our customers like to use Excel. We do have the ability to export your budget to Excel. And let me go out here and find my template. Let's see. There it is. And when I go through this process, I can do it for um, a range of dates or specific types of accounts or you know maybe just revenues or expenditures. I'm gonna go ahead and just export everything so that I've got the entire um, organization's accounts to create a new budget. 
in just a second, it's going to give me the option to go to assist or go to Excel. I'm going to go to Excel and on my toolbar, there's going to be a worksheet and it's going to have all of my accounts. I've got history so that I can see what happened the previous year. Now I could export out multiple years if I want to see that. I'm in Excel with all of my information so that I can create my new budget. And the big difference is once you finalize your budget, we're going to pick up that final column and we're going to import it in. So you're not having to key in the budget information. It comes in electronically. So once it's in, we're going to track it. Um, we also give you the ability, if you need to add accounts in Excel, we can import those into your chart of accounts. So we make it easy to do that. But once it's in, we're going to track it the same way. Um, if you're a smaller organization and you don't want to use Excel, you can still get your budget into the accounting system. There's lots of different ways. We've got worksheets. Um, I can do across the board changes. But like I said, it's totally up to you. But if you do like Excel, it comes in electronically. Once it's in, we're going to track it the same way. So as an example, when you pay your bills, do you want a warning if you're over your budget? When you look at your financial statements, you're going to get that budget comparison. So lots of ways or inquiries, you can see budget availability. Now, we do have some organizations that they need to track changes to their budget in the middle of the year. We track those, what you changed and why you changed it. Um, I do have a report that you can run for a range of years and see each account number, what was the budget, show me any revisions. And when you run your financial statements, you could run it for the original budget or the revised. So that budget is a very important part of our fund accounting solution. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we make it easy to close the year. There's a wizard so that it just opens the door, shuts the door. Um, we also have a nice feature. If you've got certain accounts that you don't want to roll into the new year, you can decide which ones you do want to roll forward. So you're still going to have the history of that old account number, but you just don't have to see it on your financial statements when you know there's not going to be any activity. So once again, that's a nice feature. Um, if you do need to reverse something, we have an easy way to reverse a transaction. If you know the number, type it in. If you don't, um, throughout the presentation, you're going to see these little boxes. Tell me what you know. Do you know a dollar amount? Do you know where it came from? Do you know a description? You can search. So if I want to um, reverse something that happened in payroll, and if that's all I know, I can bring up all the entries. Now, if this happens to be the one and I hit post, the system's going to make the offsetting entry. Complete audit trail, I'm not having to manually reverse it. There's an auto reverse for you. So if you do make a mistake, it's very forgiving and easy to correct. So those are things you might do periodically. Reports, um, for most of our accounts, these financial statements get them exactly what they need. Um, I'm going to talk about how we've got other tools to create any type of report. But like I said, these come standard. Um, one that you might want to use if you're using purchase orders, this particular report is going to show you not only what have you budgeted, what have you spent, but are there any um, outstanding purchase orders. And on our reports, you're able to slice out your financial statements based on your chart of accounts. So if I want to get just one fund, I can do that. Or maybe um, a range of departments or certain um, account number. So that's how I've got my chart of accounts defined. We'll take a peek at other ways you can set that up. But once again, you're going to always know um, the, the remaining budget percentage. Here's another report that you'll definitely run for your board. It's our statement of revenues and expenditures. Um, I can run it for the original budget or the revised. I can look at previous year actuals. Um, if I want a comparison, do I like to see the budget in a percentage or a dollar amount? Um, I can run this for any year. So if you've been using it 10, 15 years, all that data is there. And you can also decide, well, how do you want to slice it out? If I leave it blank, it's, it's going to sort by the highest and do all your funds. Maybe I only want to see one fund or maybe I only want to see a certain department. I could do that as well. And I can decide, you know, where I want to have subtotals. But once again, um, this report will give you 
for, you know, all of your accounts, you know, what's the budget, the balance, the year-to-date activity, remaining that um, budget percentage. And as I mentioned, you can also have a previous year comparison on this particular report. But this is one that you would definitely run for your board meeting. Um, we do things like a combining balance sheet, all funds, a range of funds, or individual funds. I have this budget report that I can run by account number and see what did I budget, um, what was the actual, and did I have any revisions? So once again, I can see trends. I might want to see this for five years to see how am I doing with my budgeting. I'm always off on this certain line item. So as I mentioned, for most customers, this is going to get them all the reports they need. Um, we also have a tool called Report Excellence, and it's kind of designed for customers that love to use Excel. Maybe you've created a financial in Excel that you really like, but the problem is you're having to kind of redo it each month. We can directly link that Excel workbook to the accounting software so that you're just downloading new numbers. Um, I can also very easily create a file that you might want to send to your auditor. I call this my audit file. And this is going to give you the ability to export out detailed transactions for any date range. I could do fiscal periods, maybe one year, two years, three years, or maybe a certain point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and say they're looking at what happened last year. And, um, and I can even be selective what types of accounts. I'm going to say they want to see everything, but I could look at just revenues or expenditures in which part of the organization. It might be a certain fund, a certain department. I'm going to grab everything. And in just a second, it's going to create a file. And on this file, I'm going to have all that detailed information. So here it is. And so it literally is every transaction, I've got the description, at the transaction number, the source. Did it come from utilities, payroll, building permits, what type, dates? Um, I even pick up document numbers. So what's the invoice number or the receipt number, PO information if eligible, um, vendor, um, debits and credits, a description, and even project information. So they can import this to their audit software and have all of your detailed transactions. So once again, um, it's very uh, friendly when it comes to working with Excel. Let's see here, there we go. And so once again, that's just another option that we have. So let's jump to the general ledger and let's take a look at some of our inquiries. Once again, unlimited history. So as an example, if I want to look up something that happened, and maybe the only thing I know is that it's $25, I can search. I'm kind of looking for a needle in a haystack. So you've got the ability to search based on limited information. And here's an example where it started in accounts payable. I was paying the copier lease. Here's all the accounting, but I want to know more. And I can drill down and see information on the vendor, the PO, um, the status of the check, and the attachment. If I attach that invoice when I pay it, I don't have to go to the filing cabinet. We have the ability to attach documents to the database. So really easy to do. And you're going to see that throughout most of our applications, we have that capability. Let's take a look at another example. And once again, I could look at any year. Um, I can look at any account. Um, I'm going to narrow the search and say that it's a revenue and fund too, and maybe that's all I know. So I can do a limited search. And what I want to do is I want to take a look at where we've done our utility billing because that's, you know, we're going to post in detail. I'm going to show you what you can see. Once again, I could look at any year. I can see by month, debits, credits, you know, if there's POs, I can print in detail. If I want to see literally everything that went in and out of this account, it's kind of like, you know, everything in and out, and I could do it for any year. But I want to know more. So I'm going to come down, and I'm going to go to February and drill down. Okay, I did one billing. Here's the total. Here's the journal. Now, a lot of systems will create that journal. Here's where we're unique. We take it a step further. If I post in detail, 
I can actually see the customers that were billed on the billing side in the accounting software. So same thing is true on employees or we looked at payable. So that detail is available to you even though it happened somewhere else. Um, let's look at another drill down. Here's an example where you can pick any year and um, see all your funds. Now I've only got two set up. You can obviously have as many as you want. I'm gonna look at the general fund. And in this example, I've got two departments. I can have as many. I can see the budget, the balance, the year-to-day activity I, for expenses. I can see revenue. I'm gonna drill down again. And these are all detailed transactions. I've got receipts at the counter. I've got a payroll run. Let's take a look at how that looks. So if I want to look at where I did payroll, here's the journal that we create for you. There's a lot of accounting when you do payroll. I want to know more. So if I hit display source, these are the employees that were paid at a summary view of those employees. Now, if I've got one more question, I can actually go to the check stub. So I can go to that individual check stub and see that detail in the accounting system. And once again, that's posting in detail. Now, as I mentioned tables, this is kind of where you're gonna do things like create your chart of accounts, set up your recurring entries. Um, it's where you can decide which accounts you wanna activate for the new year. So you won't spend as much time there. Now, typically in this setting, I don't cover purchase orders, but like I said, if anybody wants to set up a time to see more, we can, but we're gonna create purchase orders. We can print purchase orders. I even have the ability to have online approvals. And everything that you um, enter in on the PO side will flow to accounts payable. You're not having to key in any additional information. And you saw on that financial statement how we're gonna know what's obligated. When you do the inquiries, if there's any POs, you're gonna know that. So just wanna let you know, we do have it for those that need that capability. Um, I definitely in this setting show accounts payable. Let's take a look at where you pay your vendors. And we've got some really nice features. Okay, here's an example. This is the screen. If I wanted to do a new one, I would just say new where you enter in your, your invoices. Couple of nice features, one is, um, under you have the ability to record it but not do a paper check you might have a couple of vendors that are deducting it out of your account we also have the ability to set up on your vendors the ability to electronically pay them where you can store their direct pay information so instead of a paper check they get an email notification letting them know what invoice or maybe invoices and then they know it's in their account the next day so you can pick certain ones to electronically pay now, if you're, try, if you're keying in an invoice and it already exists for that vendor, we're gonna stop you. We know you've already paid that. And here's a feature everybody likes, separate check. So you might have a situation where you've already entered in one invoice, later in the month you get that second one, but they tell you it has to be a separate check. I can run them through the same check run and I'm not gonna combine them. So it's on an invoice by invoice basis. Now, as I mentioned, if you do have POs, we bring in the accounting. Um, you're essentially just checking to make sure the invoice matches the PO. If it doesn't, you can correct it. Uh, but you obviously do not have to use purchase orders. Um, in my example, this invoice is $1,500. Down below, I can charge that off to as many different accounts as many different funds. So, um, and you can send that vendor one check. You also have the ability to have, give you a warning if you're over your budget or even stop you right here. Um, we do have the ability to do attachments. So if you attach that actual invoice or maybe who approved it, it's gonna stay with the accounting entry. And for those in the audience that need to track fixed assets, I have a direct link from accounts payable to build that record or add that improvement. So if you need that capability, we have it. So this is where you would um, enter in those payables. Um, you have that same recurring button. You just pick which one you wanna pay. It remembers the accounting. So you don't have to recode it. It defaults it where you can make slight changes or maybe it's exactly correct. Um, but you can enter in payables a little bit each day. 
most of our municipalities or organizations, when it's time to, to pay the bills, they'll have this report, they call it the council approval report, and you can sort it several different ways. Um, I'm gonna say the council wants to see it by fund. And so I'm gonna gather all the payables, and I've got this report that you'll just run for your board meeting, and it's gonna sort it, in my example, by fund. I've got all the invoices that I've, I've entered in to pay, um, the account number that it's coming out of, the description, and on the far right-hand side, I even have a budget um, comparison. So you're gonna know right here if there's anything over budget. Once you have that meeting um, and you're ready to go through your check run, you might have a couple of those that you wanna not pay right now. Um, you simply would just come here and uncheck it. It's still in the system, we're just not paying it right now. Or it might say, I want to do a partial payment. You can do a partial payment right here, and then that balance is sitting there for you to select the next time. So it's never too late. You can still fine-tune the list. And if everything is good, um, you can go through and, you know, print your checks. We've got reports so you know how much money you need in all your accounts. And um, we can also create a file that you just send to the bank, and then um, those vendors get that automatic email. Now, one thing I do want to point out is any one of these menu options, especially things like voiding checks, you might have it where only one person can do that job. So you can lock it down by menu option. Um, you're going to notice in accounts payable, tons of reports. Um, you're going to be able to have history on every payment to a vendor, you know, what's open, check registers. You can even sort your check register by fund or department or your account structure. I can reprint checks. Um, you're going to have inquiries, just like you saw in the general ledger. I'll show you one that I like, and that's where um, if, I, if I need to look up a vendor, um, if the only thing I know is the vendor starts with an A, I can search. I can search um, at the beginning of the word, in the middle of the name, or at the end. So I've got different ways to find those. I even have different types of vendors, you know, those ones that are actually active or if they're inactive or temporary, I can search and report based on status. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring up this vendor. I can see every check I've ever issued. If I move over here, I can see the invoice or maybe invoices that that check paid, but I can see the accounting, I can see the status of the check, and I can see the attachment. So once again, everything's right here that you can easily take a look at. Now, to me, the toughest part of your job is bank reconciliation. And our cash control will simplify that process for you. It's gonna do a couple of key things. One is it's gonna actually create your deposits. I'm going to the bank and I can even select, you know, what area. I can select money from all areas or maybe just the front counter or maybe just the utility. I can pick and choose. Once I run that process, it's gonna bring in all the detailed transactions so that I can create a bank deposit. And so here they are, and I can pick which bank. Um, I can select all, I can deselect some of these. I might even have a check that needs to be deposited into two different accounts. We even handle split deposits. And I, if I'm a larger place, I could even pull in a certain cash drawer from one area. So once I create my deposit, it will create a transaction. So when I reconcile my bank statement, it's sitting there. It's going to also print a deposit slip. So with all the detail so that you can attach it and go to the bank. When you are ready to actually reconcile your bank statement, you can pick which account. And I can come down here and let's see here. It's going to bring in all the detailed transactions. So every deposit, all the checks I issued, it's even gonna bring in journal entries. If I've recorded interest at the bank or um, a wire transfer, any bank transaction will appear here as we reconcile. Now, I also have the ability that I can bring in a file from the bank. So it can match up everything that it matches and then you're dealing with a shorter list. So you can automate that process. There's what's that print out so that you're going to know what was cleared, what's still open. In one central place, we can automate that process.
You're going to also have um, reports to help you with your bank rec. Um, I've, I can print a bank statement and then compare it. I also can do deposits for a, you know, a range of dates, maybe for the quarter or the week or the month, and see what's cleared. I can do a check register, um, and I even have the ability to have payroll and payables on the same check register. And then one, depo one inquiry that I really like is our um, ability to drill down by bank and see all the deposits. So I pick any bank. I have a listing of all the deposits. I can pick any one of these and drill down and see what made up that deposit. So once again, all that information is right here, easy to, easy to access. Now, there's one other product that I, I want to show under the financial umbrella. Um, typically in this setting, I don't cover payroll, but I do want you to know we handle unlimited deductions and pay types and leave types and all the accounting if employees work in you know different departments or different funds you can electronically pay your employees and all that detail flows to the general ledger um, I do also want to show you how you can receipt things at the counter a lot of you in the audience have a lot of walk-in traffic um, so this solution cash receipts is just like a cash register Somebody walks in, I want to pay my utility bill. Okay, uh, do you know your account number? No, okay, what do you know? Do you know your phone number, your address? So that takes you to a search to find that customer. And I'm going to say it's this ACE. Um, I'm going to look at the balance in utilities and bring it in. If they're paying all of it, I can accept it, or maybe they don't want to pay all of it. For now, I'm going to say they're going to pay it all. Now, at the same time, let's say that you want to do some other transaction, maybe a permit or some other miscellaneous transaction that normally you're doing a handwritten receipt for that you can have a long list and pick and choose and do a running total. Total. So you're able to receipt for as many different things. I could pay my court fine. I could pay an invoice. And... We talked about at the beginning, if you start using that one database of names and addresses, if somebody walks in and the only thing they know is their name, I can bring in all their balances. So they might have tax accounts and multiple utility accounts, and I can see all balances right here just by knowing their name. So once again, that's one of those benefits. So you can pick and choose which one you wanna pay. Once you do have your list, um, it will print a receipt, it will make change. You can have you know, two checks in cash on the same receipt. So it literally is just like a cash register. You handle the money once and it's gonna, when we post, we're gonna update utilities or our AR system or our tax billing or even the general ledger for those miscellaneous things, but one central place. You also have the ability to reprint receipts so if a customer, um, you know, they need a, a reprint, we can reprint it. You can produce reports. Uh, maybe the auditor wants to know everything you receded one day 10 years ago. I can go to that one date and pull out everything that I receded and sort it a lot of different ways. Or I can, um, you know, do forever or, you know, last fiscal year. So lots of ways to sort what was receded, but you can see all the detail and subtotal it the way you want to see it and see what's going where. So that's one way you can get money um, into our system. We have another way. We have a lot of customers that their customers want to go to their website to get payments into the system. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up this website. And I'm going to pretend like I am one of your customers and I just got an email letting me know I have a bill. Now, as soon as I click on that, it's going to prompt me to your portal with your organization's name and I'm going to log in and I'm going to actually uh, view and pay my bill. I happen to be one of your utility customers and I've got two different accounts. I can see all of my accounts in one umbrella. Um, if I pick a certain account, I can see all the bills there. So I've only got one, but if I've got 10, I can reprint any 10 or I can look at any 10. So I'm going to look at this one, and it's essentially what you would have mailed them. 
And if they're being drafted, hey, that's great. They pay electronic, they get it electronic. In this example, I'm going to say, no, they want to pay it right now, and they want to use the credit card. So because the bill's sitting here, the balance is here. In this scenario, you collect 100% of the $65. The customer pays the convenience fee, and all these payments are integrated. So you're not having to key in the payment. You just post it in. Now, you'll probably have a lot of customers that they may want to go to your website and pay their utility bill, and maybe they didn't get it emailed. They can still do that. They can pay for other things, even if you're not using our software. The difference here is they enter in the required information. It will still calculate the convenience fee, and then they have to accept it. But all payments for any event um, are integrated in with either our AR, our utility, our tax billing, or our court software. Or if you have something that's kind of miscellaneous, you can still receipt for it, and then you'll get a report to update the other database. But this is another way to get um, payments into the system. Now, um, I was going to go ahead and switch over to utility billing. And like I said, if there's questions, you can uh, chat with me, or I'll definitely stay on at the end and answer any questions that you have. But let's take a look at the utility billing. Now, you're going to notice it's the same look and feel, the, the menu structure. Let's take a look at what we track on your customers. First of all, um, here's that search. What do you know? I can search if I know any bit of information. The meter ID, the address, the phone number, the first name, the last name, lots of ways to, to search and find the right customer. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up Lucy. Okay, this is the screen that you're going to see on your customers. So a couple key things. One is we're a cycle billing. You probably have everybody in the same cycle. However, if you don't, um, we can do different groups. But if you have everybody in the same cycle and they move in or move out mid-cycle, we can prorate those. We can go ahead and close them whenever you want. You don't have to wait. Um, we also have um, different class codes. This is a code that you set up. I've only set up three. You can have as many as you want. I can pull out reports based on this. I might want to get balances or consumption. It's just a way to pull out um, information. And then status. Um, we do have an integrated service order module so that based on status, I can automatically um, create service orders. Go get the reading for new. Go get the reading for finals. Go get the reading for transfers. Those are automatic. I can track any type of service order and tie it to the customer. Uh, but I have a status of active, um, final. I even have a status of on and off in the same billing period. Um, status of inactive, but keep billing, or inactive, don't bill. They have skipped town, but if they ever come back, you're balanced. You know that they owe you money. We're not going to lose that balance. And then if I transfer somebody, I move the um, deposit and the balance to the new address. So we move the money. And then the last one is vacant. We can even track vacant properties. So if you're still reading those, I can give you a report. Show me the vacant properties that have consumption. You can be proactive. Now, under the, the customer tab, this is where we're keeping track of who gets the bill. In my example, they're the owner and the occupant, same person. I can un uncheck owner, and I can send the bill to the renter, but I can track the owner, and I might even want to give them, send them a copy of the delinquent bill and maybe the actual bill. It's totally up to you. Or maybe uh, the situation is different where you send the bill to the owner, but you still want to know who the occupant is for emergency purposes. They can still get copies. Or you have a unique situation where somebody outside of town gets the bill, and you have an owner and an occupant. Everybody can get copies. So it's all in how you check this box so that we can track multiple people tied to this property. Um, we also have primary, secondary addresses. Um, we can keep track. Are they getting a paper bill or an e-bill? When they do register, it will um, uncheck paper and check e and store their email address. Um, we do have the ability to draft payments. So if you've got customers you want to sign up, um, they still get a bill. 
it says do not pay and we create a file you send to the bank so it's an automated process we also have unlimited metered services um, you might in my example I'm billing just water I might have an account that's got electric water and gas all on the same bill or maybe a better example is I'm billing water but this customer has five water meters it's unlimited you can have as many different rates um, we track the meter ID, the multipliers, um, the book and route, you know, the location of the meter. We work with a very long list of automated um, reading devices. So, you know, we just need to know which one you're using and nine times out of 10, I have it. I also have unlimited non-meter. I might have sewer based on water, or maybe I have garbage. Um, I can even do a declining balance. In other words, they owe me $1,000, but I want to bill $10 each month until the 1000 is paid off. And then it keeps track of how much is left to be paid. So all of that, but remember, all the accounting goes to the GL. Same thing with non-recurring charges. I can have as many of these. Turn-ons, turn-offs, bad check fees. You define it, we bill for it, we tell the accounting. You're never going to have to have other um, we can have deposits. You can have multiple deposits. You can refund deposits when they final, or you can refund deposits based on good payment history. Um, we have other information. These fields are defined by you. You can track other things in your database. You've got notes. Um, we do some actions. I can automatically create an action if they give you a bad check. So the next time they walk in, warning, no checks or if they're ever disconnected, I can create that action. Or if they're on your extension list, you can create your own codes. And it's a specific type of note that you can timestamp that you have unlimited text to describe and unlimited text on the reference number. So it's a good place to document key events. And then you also have attachments, just like you saw in Accounts Payable. You can attach um, anything you can attach in an email you can attach to your database. So pictures and PDFs, all of that stuff can be attached. Now, if I've got the customer on the phone and they have a question, I can hit the inquiry and go right to this customer's um, detailed inquiry. Hit everything on one screen so that when you've got the customer on the phone, you can answer the questions. Um, one might be, what's my balance? It'll age the balance. Um, maybe the question is, I didn't get my bill. Can you reprint my bill? So I can come here and see every bill. I can see a breakdown for all the different charges, and I can pick any one of these, and I can hit reprint. I can email it, or I can just hand it to them. Um, they probably have really specific questions like, why is my water so high? So you can actually go to the transaction tab and see detailed information. And I want to strip out everything but water. I want to see when we build water and the amount I can see the reading, is it an actual or an estimate, the date of the reading, and the consumption. Or they may have a question on a payment. I can look at all the payments and I can see how any payments were applied, all the detail. I can print their history. There's a history report that you can do right here for any point in time and it pulls up any adjustments, all the billing, all the payment, it's all right there on that one report. Now, if they have service orders, I can see those too. Any event, you can tie it to the customer and you can track what did you do, when did you do it. You can drill down and see all the details. Who called, what did they call about, what did you do? And you know, we can email these to the field or you can print them on demand. But any service order um, that's tied to this customer, we're gonna be able to see it all here on one screen. Now, getting back to the billing module, um, other things we can do, um, if a meter goes bad in the middle of a cycle, I can take out the old, set the new. We know there's consumption on both. Um, I have some customers that still enter in readings. You can key those in. However, we have a lot of customers that use automated readings. So just to give you an idea, we have a very long list of solutions that we work with. We'll just need to get with you to make sure that yours is on the list. And we're constantly adding new ones. Um, but we can also do a mass estimate. Let's say there's a problem, the guy's sick, and the units aren't working, I can do an estimate. 
Um, I'm still going to know at any point who's missing and who's out of range. And here's that meter report that everybody likes that I can do by status. Give me my vacants. I want to know if there's any consumption so you can be proactive. Now, we've talked about getting payments into the system, payments at the counter, payments on your website. Um, you still can enter in payments directly into the billing. Um, we can bring in a file from the bank. Maybe that's an option. You drop it off at the bank. We have a couple that do kiosks. I can bring it in, bring in a, a payment file. Or you probably get a lot of um, payments in the mail, checks in the mail. So I can batch those in, and um, I might have 50 checks here. If you print a barcode on the bill, you can scan that account number so that you don't have to type it in, or you can look it up. But once you enter in the account number, it is it's a check, it brings in the balance, and the only thing that I might key in is the check number. They don't always do it correctly, though. Maybe they think you're a, they're doing you a favor by paying $144 rounding up. We understand how to handle that. There's a credit. Or maybe it's short. That last service is short. So it's going to automatically apply those payments based on what defined. So once again, lots of ways to get money into the system. If you are doing our um, e-payments, you just grab and post. You get your money the next business day. If I need to reverse the payment, I have an easy way to reverse it. Type in the account number. If I don't know it, I can search. But you simply just pick which payment you want to reverse. I'm going to put the charge back out there. In this scenario, I'm going to hit them with an NSF charge and create an action, no more checks. And I'm going to tell the accounting system. It's that tightly integrated. So once again, very forgiving if you do make a mistake. Um, the billing process, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we're a true cycle billing. So if I want to just do finals today, I can do that. Or um, I've got different groups. Once I select my group, I can still make changes to my group. So here's the example. Let's say that I've got a 1,000 customers in this cycle, but I have a problem with two customers. And here it is Tuesday, and I can't get the two fixed until Friday. I want to bill today. I can go ahead and bill the 99%. I can pull out those two and move forward with the 99% and bill the other two on Friday. So I can still change that cycle. Once I have my group, I'm going to do edits. I'm going to calculate. I'm going to produce a billing register to make sure everything looks good. And then I print the bills. Now we have a laser um, statement. We have a laser postcard. Now, if customers have signed up to get their bill emailed, we know don't print those. So we automatically know that. As soon as you hit post, those customers automatically get a link to go view their bill immediately. So it's sitting up there because we post them to that website. Now, we also have a lot of customers that have decided it's cheaper for USTI to print the bills than it is for, um, for them to do it in-house. So, you know, we have an option that once you hit print, you go up here and you can track it on our website. You can track that we received it, we printed it, we mailed it. And it's cheaper and it doesn't include your labor. It's just looking at hard costs. So it, we don't, it doesn't matter to us how many. So a lot of the, the print companies, if, you're, you know, if you do under a certain amount, they don't want to deal with you. We've got customers, you know, that are billing as small as 100 bills that we're printing them for them. So, totally up to you. Um, also, under periodic, we're going to do all the delinquent processing. We can do a delinquent notice or a delinquent letter. Um, you can have minimums so that you may not want to send it to everybody. Uh, the same thing with the disconnect process. I can say, if you owe me a dollar, don't disconnect. I can even automatically put charges out there. And once again, I can have a minimum threshold, but I do create that action so that you'll know exactly what date they were disconnected on. Other things you might do, um, like I said, I can do adjustments and update the account immediately. I can also do a global charge to a group of customers. So lots of things to help you automate. Um, you're going to notice we have a ton of reports, unlimited history. Um, you, can re you can go in and run reports for any date range and see consumption dollars billed. 
Um, here's one that a lot of customers like. It's our balance report. Anybody can get you a balance today. That's easy. We give you the ability to give you a balance for any date. What were the balances six months ago? Typically, unless you've saved that report, it's hard to get. With ours, we can go back to that point in time. So that's something that auditors like, reports for certain points in time. We give you that ability. Um, we also can you know, let you know what customers are inactive and they st still owe you money. Um, I can pull out billing summary for any date range and give you for all your rates, the consumptions, the dollars billed. I even have the ability to pull out a report maybe just for one charge. Show me in the last six months who's had a um, return check fee. I can get just that and even get names. So you'll find we've got lots of reports, um, management reports. Um, we've looked at the inquiries. Um, but once again, um, lots of things to help you automate your municipality. We even have a, a meter management that we track the meters, the location, what tests have you done on your meters, and all the data, not just the ones that you're billing from. Now, um, I've got 10 minutes, and I wanted to show you um, a couple of other things. One is, you know, I talked at the very beginning about how nice it would be to have one database of names and addresses. Here's an example. You get a call from one of your constituents, and the only thing they know is their name, and on one screen, you can see everything about that person. So, you know, you can see their, they have a tax bill their utilities, have they ever had a code violation? On any one of these items, you can drill down and go to the inquiry. Um, do they have a permit or a license? So one screen and you can see their cemetery plot, an invoice, a tax bill, a utility bill, just by knowing their name. We have the exact same view by property. And we have a lot of communities that will have us bring in everything from the county so that you've got a database of all your properties and everything that's happened on that property. So you've got, um, you know, the legal description, the assessment, the, um, the owner on record, but you also know, well, what utility account is there or have there been any permits at that address or any licenses or code violations. So we give you two views to your database and you can start automating all these different areas at any point and all the revenue will, you know, imports into the general ledger. So it's all tightly integrated. Um, we also have municipal courts and public safety. But the last thing I wanted to show you is our report designer. And essentially what we're giving you is a repository for reports that you can create or files that you can create. Um, we deliver it with some. You're going to be able to do things like, you know, maybe I've got a long list and I want to get a listing of any report that has the word vendor in it. I can do that. Um, you can also put your favorites at the top, but we drop them down by product. I'm going to first show you an example of some reports that we've created with this tool, and then we'll go look at how you could create any report. Um, one is, here's one, you might have a board or you may have department heads that like to see things visually instead of numbers. And this is an example where I've created one um, budget versus actual. And so I've got a comparison for all my departments, but it's, uh, it's a visual report. So here I can see, you know, budget versus actual and for all of my different departments. And you can have um, reports in these graphs at the bottom. On all of these reports, um, you can create any kind of file. Um, you can search. You can do watermarks. Um, I'm going to show you an example where we've added drill down in a report. You've seen drill down in our um, inquiries. And in this example, you can actually create reports that have drill down behind them. And I'm just going to grab all these guys, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. First of all, obviously, you know, any font, you can put your logo. Here's an example. When you see this icon, it's a, just show me what's behind this number. So there's a drill down. Um, you can also find words, you know, what's in this report. So here's the word fuel. So I could do that. 
Um, if I want to drill down, I can hit that and see what makes up that number. So I've got the ability to do that as well. Let's see. So I could come up here, and like I said, you can see the drill down in the report. Go ahead and preview that again. I'll show you that example. And let's grab this guy. Submits. So, like I said, any you can drill down and see the journal, the numbers behind that number. Um, primarily, I think, though, you're going to use this tool to create new ones. So what we've done essentially is give you access to all the data fields. I can modify one or I can create a new one. And I'm going to call this payroll webinar April 30th. I can describe it. I can pick which product. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pull from payroll and look at it by employee. And the same thing is true for utilities or general ledger, accounts payable. But what we've provided is a blank, blank screen. And, uh, you know, for any report, you know, if you want to put your logo, just put the picture box and upload it, you know, the name of the report. Um, over here on the far right-hand side, these are all the fields in the payroll module. So if I wanted to do something just really simple, I could come here and just say I want the name, I want, uh, you know, maybe their email, maybe I want their department, and I want to come up here and maybe I want to get year-to-date gross. And that could be a report or a file. Now, it would be kind of ugly because I'd probably want to have like labels so that when I run, you know, what's this field mean? Um, I can come down here and do where do I want a subtotal? But, you know, the key thing is we're giving you access to literally all of your fields. Over here on the left hand side, you can do things like the, put the drill down in. You can do charts and graphs. So, you know, we provide training on how to use this, but it might be something as simple as I just need a file with these four bits of information, and it's that easy to grab them and create any kind of file. So, and once these you can save once you do it, they can be on your um, on your menu so you've got access to it or whatever employees that you want to but you can get really fancy or do really simple reports with this tool. So with that, I'm going to come up here and open it up. If there are, I'm gonna take everybody off mute. If there's any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Um, I also want to bring up my contact information. And let's see. Let's see here. Yeah, so if there's any questions on anything you've seen or if you'd like to get pricing or you want to see more, uh, don't hesitate to contact me, but I'll be happy to answer if there's any questions from today on the call. Well, if not, I certainly uh, thank you for your time and feel free to call me or email me with any additional information that I can provide you for. We've been doing this for over 40 years. We've got over a thousand customers all over North America, and I think you'll find there's a lot of flexibility so that you can pick the right components to put together the right solution. But thank you for your time.